from Cycling Paradise Gran Canaria. Feliz Navidad and welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show and a happy new year to you all. Yeah, coming up, we tell you whether or not you can actually give up your new year's resolutions already. We also take a look at a compilation of new kit selfies and tech of the week is a new bike day. Yeah, and we also tell you about, among other things, some very interesting scientific research about narcissists. If you put any clips in of us now, John, then that no, you won't. Won't be, it just won't be funny. No, you won't. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that winter weather is no barrier to distance. Emily Chappell, Jenny Graham and Hugh Oliver have just averaged 400 kilometers a day for four days to cover the length of Britain. That's Land's End up to John O'Groats. Mighty impressive. Now, admittedly, this is British winter, not Canadian winter, before the comment section goes completely nuts. But it has been very wet, very cold, snowy at times, and very, very dark. Yeah, it's been really dark, it's hasn't been it? Really dark. Uh, this week, we also learned that Peter Sagan can wheelie. <laughs> Last year, um, that might have actually been the year before, because we definitely learnt it when he helped film how to wheelie like Peter Sagan with us. It's incredible! Look at that, folks! Yeah, unbelievable! I guess this week we learned that Peter Sagan can still wheelie in 2018. Incredible stuff! All mm. uh, right, well we're still very much in the aftermath of New Year, and therefore resolutions still very fresh in our minds. Perhaps not so fresh for some of us. No. Not so fresh in our minds. Anyway, as any self-respecting lifestyle guru will tell you, the new year is a great time to create a new you. Yeah. Well, is it, is it really, Dan? I mean, how did your New Year's resolution go last year? The sub hour and a half half marathon. So what? Yeah, I, I didn't get around to doing that in the end. No. How was yours? Uh, correcting my posture with regular core work. Yeah. I think we could all tell. <laughs> Got to February. Yeah, how about your previous one, 2016? Yeah, in 2016, my aim was to do an extra sit-up and press-up for each day of the year. And that went well. swimmingly well until April, where I cracked. This is Lloydie. We're in Belgium, Flanders. It's, 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 it's really late. We've been on the Actimel, and, uh, and Lloydie's insists on doing press-ups while his mates watch. Generally, though, sticking to New Year's resolutions is pretty tough. And so we thought we'd basically go through some common cycling-related New Year's resolutions and tell you which ones you can give up now. Save yourself all the time. Yes, but you're not all getting out of it quite that easily because we have also found some ways in which you can make a lasting change if you want to. Okay then, first up, it's a common one. Eat more healthily. Give it up, Ser seriously, just give it up. It's a good idea, I'm sure that we could all benefit from that one, but it's just, it's just not possible. That's right, because apparently, successful change rarely comes from wholesale change. That. That sounds deep. Doesn't it just? Basically what it means is that there is evidence out there that shows that we, humans, have a limited amount of willpower. It's like a finite resource. So if you try and do too much at any one time, you are destined to failure. It's just like impossible. So instead, you break it down into smaller, repeated resolutions that you drop in throughout the year so you can tick them off instead. So like having one extra portion of fruit per day as opposed to 10. So what about something like I want to ride 10,000 miles this year, or I want to do 10 hours on the bike each week. I mean, that's got to be a good idea, hasn't it? Because the more time you spend on the bike, the fitter you're going to be. Give Joy. it up. Totally. Miles and hours on the bike do not necessarily make you fitter. Certainly, it's not the right thing to do if you want to go faster. Hmm. Well, I still think that more time on the bike's got to be a good thing, so we should applaud the sentiment behind that. We absolutely should. So how do you make sure that you spend a little bit more time in the saddle this year then? Well, you could take a leaf out of Jerry Seinfeld's book and put an X on a calendar every time you ride your bike. And then focus instead on not breaking the chain of Xs as opposed to focusing on riding your bike every day. Presumably, Sir, you will allow us to put an X down if we've simply ridden to the shops or to the pub. Oh yeah. What about an event? Doing an event, doing a race for the first time. No, don't bother. What? People might already have entered, Dan. Well, yeah, too late. They might have entered off the back of GCN's recommendations of previous years. It's but a what great I idea. mean with this one, Sai, 
is that it's a bit like doing a certain number of miles per year or the hours per week we talked about before in that having a big event constantly in your mind on the horizon can sometimes be quite daunting. Well, that is true, actually. Nothing disrupts the ability to perform quite like worrying about the outcome. That that does sound deep. Doesn't it just? It's not really. It's basically just like with the eating more healthily thing that you should instead have smaller resolutions throughout the year that build you up to your target so that basically you can keep your motivation going and just tick things off as you go along. Hmm. Cool, huh? Right, what about another common one? Core work, stretching. No, give it up, Sir. Si. Well, you did give it up, didn't you? I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, there is no doubt that core work could make you healthier, yeah. stronger, give yeah. you more flexibility, give you Make you more... you more upright. Yeah, exactly. But the fact is that very, very few people can actually stick at it in the pudding right next to me here. Three, two, one, and recover. Great job. To illustrate this point, sir, I'm gonna give you a fact now. Apparently, 80% of people with gym memberships never go to the gym. Crikey, not going to the gym is an expensive habit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you do your core work then? Probably a legitimate question. Micro resolutions. That's right, a resolution so small, your brain won't even bother procrastinating, so, I'm going to try this one out. 20 seconds of core work. Well, this day. was kind of the premise behind my extra sit up and press up each day of the year two years ago. And the only reason I gave up when I got past 100 was because an old collarbone injury resurfaced. Ah, uh, yeah, the old collarbone injury. Yeah. That old chestnut. Oh, one more. 18. <sighs> <sighs> All right, last one then. What about just enjoy it? Just enjoy no. cycling. Just. No, you can give that no. one as well. No, serious, mate. This no. is getting weird now. Well, I mean, to give an example, Japanese psychologist Shoma Morito pointed out that whilst people always feel like they should be enjoying what they are doing, they're actually wasting considerable mental energy trying to avoid feelings of boredom and displeasure. Well, that sounds deep. Hmm? What you mean then is that actually, rather than worrying about whether we enjoy our bike rides or not, we should just go out and ride anyway. Yeah, yeah it's called Type 2 Fun. So you enjoy it once you're back home in hindsight. There's quite a lot of that in my cycling. I think in cycling in general, there's a lot of Type 2 Fun. Yeah, there is. Actually. Yeah, there's nothing else. It makes cups of tea taste good when you get home, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Right, uh, now, lastly, we will say uh, that if you have ever managed to make a New Year's resolution stick, then absolutely fair play to you. That is very impressive. But if you haven't ever made a New Year's resolution stick, then also, don't worry about it because as we said, they're super tough and maybe there's probably not that much evidence to say that it is even achievable. I wonder how many of them have already given up on day two of 2018. <laughs> uh, as ever, we would love you to get involved in the comments section below. What we would like to hear is what your New Year's resolutions are for 2018. And if any of them are easy enough, we might even join in with you. Yeah, late, which kind of makes them not New Year's <laughs> resolutions, doesn't it? Well, we can carry on two days into 2019, we'll be fine. <laughs> It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We shall begin our first Cycling Shorts of the year with news of Cycling Shorts. Yeah, and lots of them, because January the 1st is the day when professional cyclists can go from old team kit to new team kit and then proudly show us, or in some cases awkwardly, on social media. Yeah, let's take a look at compilation of some selfies, or Ooh. not selfies as the case may be. Uh, first up, we have Alexander Kristoff, who is now, of course, rider for Team UAE Emirates. This is his European Champions kit, complete with white shorts. Yeah, controversial, Alexander. Looking very sharp there, but perhaps not looking quite so good, maybe at the end of Tour of Flanders or Paris Bay. We'll see how the weather is. Indeed. Nice kids, by the way, very cute. Uh, next up, we have this one. That's Mikel Lander going rogue with his new Movistar kit on a Canyon mountain bike. Doesn't he look good though? And looking like he means business. He's got that thousand yard stare going on, like that. And a timely reminder that Movistar have an all new women's team for 2018. Here's Rachel Naylor, and she looks like she means business as well, doesn't she? Yeah, serious look going on Focus. there. Uh, next up, we have Molly Weaver, who'll be riding for the Trek Drops team in 2018. Uh, she's also got quite a serious look going on, but the classic model pose to the side. Yeah, middle distance. It's all about the middle distance. That tells the world that you mean business for the forthcoming season. Uh, an equal catalogue pose, I think, here from Tom Scoynes, now riding for Trek Segafredo. I like the smile on that one, Dan, because it's not just middle distance. He's also kind of like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I reckon yeah. that took quite a long time to capture. Yeah, but he looks good there, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely looks good. Time for some controversy then. Uh, this is Fabio Aru, who is actually a national champion of Italy. 
quite hard to see on that particular kit, as mm. you can well see on the screen right now, and it caused quite a lot of controversy amongst people on social media. So much so, in fact, that his team, UAE Emirates, have said that this was only a provisional kit and it will be changed before the racing season starts. Yeah, that's like a P-ban before the season's really got going. Positive bicycle advocacy notice of the week. <laughs> We've successfully changed his national champs kit. Uh, this one doesn't need changing. Check it out, FDJ's two almost matching national champs. Yeah, this is Arno Demar and Raymond Sinkledam, and it's a classic national champions jersey with no sponsors. That's how it's done, Team UAE. Uh, next up, we have this Eleanor Barker back with Wiggle High Five uh, after a few seasons away. Yeah, she says it's day one and also day 731 uh, after three years away. And finally, some great news from the world of cyclocross because Nikki Bramio is not only sporting a new jersey, but is also riding for a brand new team. That's right, the Madita Canyon team, which is going to be a development team for young up-and-coming cross riders. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. All uh, right, let's head off to Kent University where there's been some more good news over the past few weeks. Uh, Dr. Angela Ridgell spent the last 10 years of her career researching the effects of cycle therapy on people who are living with Parkinson's disease. That's right, and the latest development is something called SMART, which is... Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, please, mate. Uh, it is Speed Manipulated Adaptive Rehabilitation Technology. That was what I was going to say. It is Speed Manipulated Adaptive <laughs> Rehabilitation Technology. The idea behind it uh, comes from previous work done in 2009, which showed that sufferers of Parkinson's showed significantly reduced symptoms after they had been for a bike ride on the back of a tandem. So what SMART is trying to do is replicate that sensation but using a specially adapted home trainer. Yeah, Dr. Ridgell is hoping that this new technology will not only alleviate some of the symptoms that people with Parkinson's disease have, but also slow the progression of the disease, which is fantastic news. It's amazing what riding a bike can do for you, isn't it? It is absolutely amazing. What is not so amazing, unfortunately, though, Dan, are e-bikes in New York. Okay, while it might be legal to sell and own an e-bike in New York, it's actually illegal to ride one on the streets. And not only that, but police and city officials are promising a crackdown on e-bikers, rogue e-bikers, in 2018. In particular, owners of fast food outlets who actually turn a blind eye to employees using e-bikes. You would have thought that New York, of all places, would be embracing e-bikes to try and reduce some of the congestion from motor vehicles. I literally did think that, Dan. Yeah. Well, it seems that there is a bit of an anti-e-bike sentiment amongst people there, because they are deemed both too quiet and too fast. Hmm. Where they can hear us coming. <laughs> uh, right, at the other end of the scale is Sweden, because they have announced that people who buy a new e-bike there will get a 25% rebate on their purchase, because what they have found in their studies is that an e-bike often replaces a car. Yeah. I suspect, Dan, you know, residents of New York will soon be able to secure reductions of in excess of 25% off e-bikes. Yeah, one would imagine. big sales there, yeah. Yeah, but staying in New York, and some good news for normal pedal bikers, uh, is that actually you'll soon be able to try out a pilot valet bike parking scheme, which sounds absolutely amazing. The idea is that for people that combine cycling with public transport, there isn't enough secure bike storage at key stations. So instead what you do is hand your bike over to someone else and they take your bike and secure it off-site, which is something that I would Definitely sign up for. Yeah, no, you've got to love that, haven't you? Ah, amazing. Genius. Uh, right, whilst we're at it, I also want to give a shout out to the police department in my new favourite place, Ottawa. Ottawa. Sorry, mate. What? Ottawa. That's right, I think. Ottawa. 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 Uh, anyway, regardless, they were very quick to jump on Twitter and social media recently to highlight the fact that we cyclists have every right to ride on the roads, even in the depths of winter. Wow, that, that really does look like proper winter, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, well then, Canada. Uh, right, now, not necessarily linked to the tweet that sparked that whole thing off, but there was a scientific study concluded recently that showed that narcissistic drivers make for aggressive drivers, and aggressive drivers, remember, account for 50% of all traffic fatalities. Mm, a narcissist being somebody who absolutely loves themselves and thinks that they're better than anyone else. Imagine that. Uh, anyway, I guess this is not completely surprising, but the question should be, what now to do about it? Well, the authors of the report concluded that education of narcissistic drivers would be a good place to start. But before we get all smug about this, 
There was also a study published in December that was undertaken jointly by academics from Bologna University in Italy and Madrid University in Spain that showed that angry cyclists, and that's angry, not narcissistic necessarily. Come on! Come on, you f ah! Actually, statistically, have more near misses with cars and also pedestrians. Hmm. Food for thought there. So if you get angry at cars, you are far more likely to have a near miss with a pedestrian. Although interestingly, the study found no link between getting angry at other cyclists and having near misses with no. other cyclists. So road rage in professional cycling can stay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right, we shall finish Cycling Shorts this week with news on the Chris Froome saga. No news this week, actually, was there? Uh, no, no, but stay tuned this time next week and we'll bring you the latest updates. Tech of the week now, and you will no doubt have seen that we have recently launched a brand new channel. Uh, it's called GCN Tech and we are very excited about it. What though does it mean for us here at GCN? Well, it doesn't look good, does it really? No. Okay. No, only kidding. Don't worry at all. All of your usual GCN content will still exist, except for Maintenance Mondays, which does migrate across over to the tech channel, as well as a whole host of other seriously cool tech features. Mm. What the new channel does mean for us, though, is that it's going to allow us extra time to create some really in-depth videos and features on the geeky and nerdy side of our sport, which is tech, which we love and we know that you love as well. Yeah, and it's all going to be with the safe, very capable, very knowledgeable... You have knowledgeable hands? You know what I mean. John Cannings, uh, who is our tech guru. Now, you've already seen him here on GCN, and he is going to be looking after that channel. Although, unfortunately, sometimes Dan and I will also be there as well. Yeah, sorry about that. Exciting time, nonetheless. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, right, on to the actual tech of the week for the first time in 2018. And the way in which UCI Pro Riders contracts run, i.e. from January the 1st to December the 31st each year, means that some professional cyclocross riders occasionally change bikes kind of midway through their season. And we don't mean changing bikes in the pit, we mean actually completely changing brands. Yeah, it seems bonkers, doesn't yeah. it? But nevertheless, it happens. And this year, the most high-profile switch, probably the most high-profile rider of them all, Matthew van der Poel and all his team, have jumped from Stevens bikes over to the Canyon Inflight CF SLX. Yeah, some of you may well have seen that exact bike here on the GCN show last year, so I took a first look in September time. Uh, he is running a full Shimano Dura Ace group set, including the wheels. On those wheels are FMB tubular tyres, and he's running a Celitalia saddle up there on the top too. Yeah. So far, it's been very successful. One race, one win. Uh, he took the Grand Prix Sven Nace on New Year's Day. That's not bad, is it? You know what, that bike when it was launched, really polarised opinion. But I think this one, this is looking stunning. I think that's, that looks great. Yeah, it's going to have a lot of fans. Looks aggressive. And it's also fast, clearly. For him. Yeah, yeah, no, I, in my first look, he didn't go that quick. Racing news this week. It starts with a bit of an announcement, actually, of our own. It does, yes. Uh, we're very excited about this one as well, actually. We are. Replacing Maintenance Monday this coming Monday will be the first ever episode of GCN's Racing News Show, uh, which will kind of do pretty much what it says on the tin, really. Although, rather than focusing solely uh, on reading out race results, we are going to be asking you, our wonderful viewers, for your help with this too. That's right. Rest assured, long-time viewers of GCN, and this will not be like the original GCN news show that you may well remember and continue to chuckle at. Yeah, we yeah. wince at it. Yeah, basically. Welcome back to the Global Cycling Network. Uh, no, we will be after your opinions uh, to discuss the biggest talking points of the week, the biggest controversies of the week. Uh, and basically, if you're interested, you'll be able to watch it next Monday. Yeah, so can't now. wait. That's going to be very good indeed. All uh, right, on with actual racing news now. And whilst we have been taking a bit of a break from work over the holiday period... The cyclocross stars have been working harder than ever. Uh, we've got some good news for you, though. The men's racing appears to be back to a two-horse race. Yeah. Wout van Aert got the better of Mathieu van der Poel at the Brico Cross, and that was hot on the heels, actually, of his win at the Namur World Cup. Yeah. Mathieu van der Poel, though, did manage to take the Azen Cross, the Super Prestige at Degum, yeah. the World Cup at Zolder, and then also the GP Sven Nace yeah, on New Year's Day. He's not well. exactly a fading force, is he? No, it's probably more like a 1.2 on 
horse race, isn't yeah. it? But uh, anyway, never mind. Women's racing uh, in cyclocross continues to be as close as ever and definitely more exciting. Yeah, that, despite the fact that actually world champion Sana Khan has been quite dominant herself well, she over has, the yeah. last couple of weeks. Uh, she also won the Alzen Cross and the Deegan Super Prestige and actually her win at the Zolda World Cup was her 100th career win. Wow. So. Sana can! Yay! Yes. Uh, meanwhile, Casey Compton took a win at the Grand Prix Sven Nace on Monday. Yeah, results don't tell the whole story here, do they, though? Because actually, it's the time gaps between the top riders in the women's category that makes it so exciting. And don't forget as well that we've got riders coming to form as well, like Pauline Ferrand Prevost, Mariana Voss, and Lucinda Brand as well. So, this could be a very, very tasty World Championships coming up beginning of February. It will be. And you can get a recap of all of the action there on the GCN Racing News Show. Got that in. It's time now for Hack Forward Slash Bodge 2018. Oh yeah. We're actually going to start with an announcement. Yeah. Okay. We often say when there's a really good hack that perhaps the person sitting in should have patented it. But according to commenter Tim Renner, he said... Uh, that actually once a new idea has been released to the world through a show like the GCN show, it can't be patented. So universally, says this is how the law works. So all the inventors of terrific hacks need to have applied and cleared a few registration hurdles before showing us all their wonderful ideas. So there we go. That's a warning to uh, all yeah. super hacks out there. Well, let's hope that the following hacks and bodges uh, and their creators have filed for patents if they think it could be a commercially viable product. Yeah. Maybe we should do a crossed. video, actually, about how to launch successful new tech innovation to the cycling world. Uh, we could do, couldn't we? Uh, right, let's crack on with our first hacks and bodges of the year. Uh, the first one are these flip-flops made out of tyres. They were sent oh, in to us yes. by Ben Stancombe. Uh, he is in a GCN t-shirt there with his friend. Nice uh, he was inspired by some North African refugees who he found working in a bike shop in Italy uh, and decided to source some scrap tyres from Alpine bikes in uh, Illeleithen. Illeleithen? Yeah, he spelled that wrong, hasn't he? <laughs> He put in a laven on there. It is in a Uh Right, but they look very grippy and apparently they're quite comfortable as well. Yeah. I think they could be commercially viable. I'd pay for some slightly better ones in there. <laughs> nice, yeah, that's very cool. Uh, right, next up we got this one from Chad McNeese. This is amazing, isn't yeah. it? So apparently this is, well as it looks like in fact, this is not just a one-off. He's been designing these for years. That looks pretty close to Oh, I've finished the article, if you yeah, ask me. Yeah, nice little rocker there. Apparently, it improves your comfort on the bike, and he thinks there might be less strain on your frame in the trainer as well, but it must be easier getting out of the saddle on that thing on a static home trainer, wasn't it? Yeah, nice work. Uh, meanwhile, over on Instagram, Saluch uh, has made his own homemade wheel chewing stand. That, that looks, does look good, that. Looks neat. You know what I particularly like about this one is the comment that someone's left, which is that, uh, I guess you didn't go snowboarding. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think I'd rather go snowboarding than uh, make a wheel chewing stand, but it is neat. It's got something way laid, yeah, making <laughs> yes. his own wheel chewing stand. Uh, love this one. Got to be first bodge of the year, hasn't it? Uh, it's from David <laughs> Rodriguez, sent to us as a message on <laughs> Facebook. Uh, obviously somebody who didn't have enough layback on their saddle, a uh, seat pin, shall I say. That's terrifying, isn't it? I mean, that does the job, doesn't it? I'm not sure plumbing is that strong, is it really? Probably get a bit of suspension might be, out might of it as well. Well, maybe. Uh, this next one, though, from Robbo Willis on Facebook. I think he's I think he's cracked that. Look at those hand warmers. They look amazing. Yeah, I'm not sure they're his. I think you might just have seen the bike out oh. and about. But they'd be perfect in Ottawa, wouldn't they? In where, mate? Ottawa! Ottawa! Ottawa. Uh, moving on, uh, this from Wheels of Karma. Uh, he has spotted this bodge. Basically, a container on the back of the bike supported by a couple of metal bars and a skateboard. That's a neat bodge, mate. I'd that's, say that's a hack. That does the job, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, what a great selection for the first week of 2018. Thank Brilliant. you all of you who sent them in. Uh, as we said at the start, if you'd like to use the hashtag GCN hack, uh, you can share your favorite hacks and bodges with us. Keep them coming. It's Caption of the Week time now. Uh, this photo was actually from two weeks ago, wasn't it? Because we had our award show last week. Uh, it's Matthew Vanderpool. Coming off. Uh, we've spent a lot of time deliberating the winner of this because there were yeah. some good ones, but we have decided... On whose side? On... Dave Johnson. A for effort, Dave. You ready for this, everyone? Matthew Vanderpool rode on a grassy knoll. Although he was good, he slipped in the... mud and ended up going for a roll. 
So there we go. You have got yourself a GCN Camelback water bottle. That was yeah. the best caption we had, was it? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a good <laughs> effort. I just there's a bit of issue with the old rhyming. Maybe my accent's wrong. Yeah. Maybe what was it? Mood. And mood. Good. Or good. mud and gud. Good mud. Oh, either mood. way. Uh, this will be winging its way to you, Dave, as soon as we get your address, which you can send through to us as a message on Facebook. This week's photo is this one of Zeeberg and Greipel, uh, well, doing one of their new team photos. Their team photos do get weird, don't they? Yes. What on earth is this one all about? I've well, got a great one to start us off with this week, though, Simon. Go on, mate, make it good, because this is the first of the year. It's going to uh, set us up for the next 52 weeks. <coughs> uh, this week... Weeks. Hush. Sorry. This week, it's a lotto rollover. Well, anyway, uh, well, maybe someone would like to create a poem that rhymes uh, I think to try be and win the caption competition next week. I Don't forget, a, you can win a GCN Camelback water bottle. I think a non-rhyming poem would probably be better than that, mate. So I'm honest. Mm. Before we get to what's coming up on the channel this week, let's have a quick go through of some of the great comments that you have all been leaving underneath our videos. We do enjoy reading them very much. Firstly, actually, we've got to give a big shout out to Toasty Bear. Now, uh, I'm not entirely sure how it happened, but in the awards show, we forgot to mention you uh, when we were running through some of the most prolific commenters under the channel. So here you go, Toasty, or yeah. Mr. Bear, or Mrs. Bear. Uh, this is for you, your very own shout out. Thank you very much. And if commenting. you do not comment underneath this week's show, we're going to be very disappointed, <laughs> aren't we? Uh, right, this one I particularly liked underneath the bloopers video from Stephen Williams. Uh, he says, I'm getting a ticket to the Taipei Bike Show next year just to see Sai's art exhibit, Cyclist Contemplating Life and Death. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. All right, you're going to like this one as well, Dan. This is sent in by EM. Dan Toothpick Lloyd picks a 100% muscle bike. Proves that opposites attract. I don't quite get that. No, I don't know. I mean, you did do 100 press-ups, didn't you, in 2016? Yeah. In April. All right. Uh, anyway, coming up on the channel this week. Uh, first up, Cy goes through five essential cyclocross skills. Uh, then, on Thursday, it is part three of our Top 10 Toughest Riders series. And then on Friday, it's Ask GC Anything. Yep, Saturday we've got How to Be a Meat-Free Athlete. So a load of really great tips from nutritionist Nigel Mitchell. Then on Sunday we've got another indoor training video. It's Zwift Workouts with Matt. And then Monday, it's not Maintenance Monday, is it? No. Oh, no. You know what it is. Oh, yeah. What is it, mate? It's the GCN Racing News Show. Of course it is. First episode. Yeah. And then Tuesday, I can't do that joke now because I've already done it. It's the GCN Show. Yay. Make sure you keep the first ever GCN Racing News Show because it could be worth something in a few years. <laughs> if it's anywhere near as good as the original GCN News Show, Dan. <laughs> uh, it's always worth watching that one. Have fun, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to add your comments down below. Right, well that is unfortunately the end of the GCN Show. There is no Extreme Corner this week. Uh, out. Yeah, uh, unfortunately uh, they're still on holiday. So being extreme, they obviously had a bigger New Year's than the rest of us and uh, they didn't make it in for work this morning. Yeah, still recovering, but hopefully back in time for next week. Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? Because they are extreme after all. Yeah. Now, you might have noticed that Cy and I are sporting some rather nice new GCN sweaters. Oh yeah, New jumpers. Year, New You, New Threads. Uh, if yeah. you like them, you can buy them yourselves by clicking on the link, which is on the screen right now, or just heading to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Yeah, and you know the drill by now, except we're going to ask you to subscribe to the GCN Tech channel. Oh, that yeah, way you that. will always be in the right place for all the forthcoming tech videos. Or indeed, take a shortcut right now and watch the first ever Maintenance Monday over there. That's yep. just down there. Or on the other hand, and on the other side, if you have happened to miss our £100 eBay bike challenge, you can find that down there. We had some great fun, didn't we? Yeah, we Me did. with my muscle bike. <laughs>